Tom Holm, I invited you to the studio because I would Thank like you, you in, in, uh, in this very interesting moment, uh, your reaction. The reason is you have been almost for five years Minister for Greenland and as such you were the one negotiating how to get Greenland out of the European Union. May I first ask you to tell in which way is Greenland Denmark? Greenland and Denmark and the Faroe Islands, we are together and we are together since more than 300 years with Greenland. And of course we have developed together and Greenland is a part of our Danish responsibility. But of course Greenland has also developed its own autonomy. It's a part of the Danish uh, kingdom. We have the same queen, we have the same prime minister, the same parliament, but they have their own, own home rule system. But the funny thing was Denmark became a 73 member of the European Union. The Faroe Islands never became member, but Greenland became member. There's How a very uh, there's a very easy explanation. The Faroe Islands uh, was not a colony under Denmark and already during the Second World War they had the autonomy which Greenland did not have. And when we changed our constitution Greenland became a part, really a part of Denmark, and we needed to develop a new home rule system, and we actually needed also to get the same autonomy or similar uh, independence in Greenland like in the Faroe Islands. So when Denmark joined uh, the European Union, there was never a discussion about the Faroe Islands joining, uh, but it was taken as evident that Greenland had to join. But then, I think it was mid-80s, Greenland decided we want a referendum whether to stay or not to stay. And it was said, actually quite an interesting situation because this was in um, the autumn of 1982. And there was a referendum in Greenland like there had been before. But first time there was this referendum, there was a majority against joining the European Union, but the Dan Danish government at that time could only say, sorry, we will collect your votes together with the Danish votes, and there's still a majority. But in the second situation, uh, there was this home rule system, more independence, more autonomy in Greenland, so we could decide, and we decided in the government, to respect this decision of the referendum. Actually, we did that the 10th of September 1982, when the government started. It was in the very, very first meeting the ministers, we were 21 ministers, had. The first issue we discussed was in uh, this group of ministers, should we respect or should we not respect uh, the decision in Greenland, and we accepted immediately, even when the government was very much in favor of the European Union, yes, we do respect uh, the decision in Greenland, and then it was my job to negotiate and get a good deal, which we actually also did. How do you negotiate this kind of a request? It was, of course, strange, because the European Union did not know how to act, and we did not know how to act. They had a special commissioner from Ireland, Mr. Burke, who was responsible for these negotiations. And from Denmark, we had the Danish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Uffe Ellemann Jensen, and me being responsible. And uh, many of the countries in the European Union was maybe not that interested, but there were three countries where we had serious problems. And one was Germany, and one was France, and one was, which today is ironic, United Kingdom. Uh, the German fishermen in the northern part of Germany, they had normally the access to fish in the Arctic Sea, and they were angry uh, if they could not keep this right. So I negotiated with uh, Hans Dietrich Genscher, the Minister of Foreign Affairs at that time, to find a solution for this. And France had problems with what they called the overseas territories. They had former colonies around, which are not member of the European Union, and they did not really know how will they react, how can we react. And with the United Kingdom, we had this interesting situation that, of course, they have the um, Jersey Islands, uh, they have uh, the Isle of Man, and they are not member of the European Union. So-called so, Channel Islands. Yes, so that means that they would discuss how can we do this. Uh, and when we then started, and I say this with a historical background also, when you negotiate, of course you have your own interests to take care of, which United Kingdom also has now and which the European Union had. And we wanted to get access via Denmark to export Greenlandic products into the European Union. 
and the European Union wanted to have the right to fish some fish in the Arctic uh, area. And then, which also, of course, is an, something you have to think of when you talk about the United Kingdom, Greenland is, people do not, not, not always know it, not only big, it is huge, really huge. And it has a very big importance for NATO, for the whole uh, security in the world, and it is a part of our, Denmark's task, to have a social stability in this area. So the European Union had also to count on this. But of course the European Union would also like, and would also today like, to have a kind of a Arctic window. Uh, so it was interesting uh, negotiations, and we ended them in... Uh, with the date 1985, where Greenland then left as the only part of the European Union which has left until now. Could you see any kind of parallel to the situation uh, Mrs May in uh, 10 Downing Street is now? Yes, at least I can see three parallels. The one is that it's a new situation. Sorry, it's not a joke, but it is also for them a new situation like it was for us. And I am not comparing Greenland and the United Kingdom, but we are in the same situation. How do we do this? That's the one thing. The second thing is that when politicians negotiate, they are as intelligent as normal human beings. So they are sitting down without emotions and they are discussing where are our interests, where are your interests, how can we find some compromises. That was the case for Greenland, that will also be the case here. What I do not understand, and especially today where the court has spoken in London, I could not imagine that a government would try to make a deal without asking the parliament. That is so far away from the way a Danish government would uh, ask with the Danish parliament. So the whole discussion, which I understand is very important in the United Kingdom, would not exist, for instance, in, in Denmark, because the government is in that close contact always with the parliament. If you now were in the position of Mrs May, what would you do? I would be a little more polite, I think. And I think I would also be aware that after these discussions, we have to live together. And I would try to close fewer doors than she, in my opinion, already are closing. And um, I think I would try to be more open. But that's one thing. I would see a problem which is, in some way, parallel to the Faroe Islands, to Greenland and to Denmark, being together in one country. She has a serious problem with Scotland, of course. She might also have a problem with Gibraltar. She might have a problem with the Northern Ireland, but she has especially a problem with Scotland. And you can only solve that with a respect for the will in Scotland. And uh, she, I think, is not wisely blocking this discussion with Scotland. I think that they have to be in, in close contact also there. And let me end our conversation here by asking you about Scotland. What advice would you give the uh, um, lady up there, ruling more or less, uh, but on um, waiting for orders from uh, um, Mrs May, what would you tell her how to get don't forget, out? Don't forget that Scotland has a lot of influence also in the Parliament in London. And uh, I would, of course, uh, give the advice that Scotland is a member of the European Union and, in my opinion, can and should stay. And uh, you could say that Denmark and Greenland was together member of the European Union. Greenland left. You could call this a reverse Greenland exactly. uh, idea. You could say, well, some parts of a area of a country, United Kingdom, uh, some part of this is leaving, but another part could stay. It so could first be a, rever a reverse Greenland, the I First think. they have to leave Great Britain. Yes. And then to yeah. apply for... But membership. Greenland is a part of Denmark and is not a part of the European Union, so you could also say that Scotland in some way could stay both in United Kingdom uh, with some kind of more independence now and then also stay in the European Union.